Hello everybody, and welcome back to another video here on Penny Dreadful MTG channel. Um, today we are playing um, more historic, and uh, what we have today is uh, Oketra's Monument. Um, black, white, green, Oketra's Monument. So this is a deck, this is actually maybe the first deck I brewed in this format, and um, did really well with it right off the bat. Um, and in part, I brewed it because it was a mono white deck that played a lot of like commons and uncommons that made it so that, you know, when I didn't have a lot of uh, wild cards, when I didn't play the, on Arena that much, I was able to play it. But um, I've since expanded it. I've played green white, I've played, played black white, and this is kind of the final form black white green. <laughs> um, I think there's definitely still an argument for green white because the mana is not great in this deck. Um, but. Uh, you are mostly a base white deck. Um, let's call it base green white um, because you are playing one drop green creatures. Uh, splashing black for this card, Juggernaut Peddler. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you basically you get to replace one of their cards in their hand with a Juggernaut, which is a card you just don't care about in this deck. So let me take a step back real quick and explain what the deck's trying to do. So it's based around this card, Oketra's Monument. Um, this is a card that's seen some very fringe play in modern. Um, it's a three-mana artifact. White spells, white creature spells cost one less, and whenever you cast a creature spell, notably any creature spell, doesn't have to be a white spell, um, you make a 1-1 one, one warrior with vigilance. <coughs> so, um, this deck, when I first built it, was absolutely playing for a catcher's monument, and you kind of wanted to do anything you could to even play more. You just desperately needed this card. But there, I've found enough tech, and there's been cards printed, such that um, I was actually able to recently cut to go down to three, um, so that you don't end up with the clunky two ofs, as it's a legendary um, artifact. So the idea behind the deck is basically you're making a bunch of tokens, overwhelming your opponent with a ton of creatures, and um, killing him. Um, so this version is meant to be uh, a somewhat disruptive version. And so you're playing four Esper Sentinel. Um, there's kind of a mana disruption package in four Esper Sentinel and three Thalia, Garden of Thraben. Um, Thalia is a little bit awkward with Oketra's Monument. You know, turn two Thalia prevents you from playing Oketra's Monument. But the decks where Thalia is good against, it's so good against it that it's worth it. And you can always just, you know, you'll often have another play if you want to be able to play this on turn um, turn three. You can also play it on turn two, which is a big reason to play green, is that we get access to Avacyn's Pilgrim for turn two Monument, which is super powerful. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, so we have four Rope Line Attendant. Um, this is a card you'll remember for the Bant Coco deck that I think is just completely busted and kind of works as your um, second copy of Monument because it's just another way to, you know, whenever you cast a creature, make a 1-1. Make a one -one. Uh, you'll notice that this deck isn't super all-in on the Monument. Like, you know, there there's some cards that you can play that, like, really combo off with the Monument, but this deck really doesn't need it in play to win. There's a lot of ways for this deck to win. So, and this is one of the important backup ways. Uh, you'll also remember from the Bank Coco deck, Delny, um, which works really well with Rope Line. It also works nicely with Juggernaut Peddler to get two triggers here, and nice, really nicely with Esper Sentinel, so whenever they cast a non-creature, you get two Esper Sentinel triggers. Um, we're playing two Skyclave Apparition, which if you watched all the way through the Bant Coco deck, I talked about why this card was not in Bant Coco, because it's a little awkward Delny, but here we're just kind of going for it. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's totally fine. This deck makes so many tokens that the fact that, uh, th so the awkward thing if you didn't watch it was that um, while it's a combo with Delny in that you get two Skyclave Apparition triggers to exile two things, you also get, you also double your triggers of them getting tokens when this dies. So, uh, you know, if you exile two things, then this dies, they get four tokens. So that, that's pretty awkward. Um, but uh, an important card, to just, you know, a bit of removal, gets rid of the one ring, which is an important card um, to defeat, and, uh, you know, random other stuff. There's, like, Enchantress and things like that. So it's important to have a good catch-all answer. Um, uh, a new card that just got printed, Imara. Uh, I think we talked about this in the Bant Coco deck, but um, for those who didn't watch it, uh, how can I... Why can't I... 
Let's see. Oh, I think I have to do it this way. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, so when it comes into play, you draft a card from its spellbook. For those who haven't played Arena, drafting from a spellbook means it has a it has a spellbook of nine cards, and drafting means they randomly give you three, and you get to choose one of them and put it into your hand. Um, so all the spells in the spellbook have Convoke, um, Ancient Periosaur, Conclave Tribunal, Knight Errant of Eos, Loxodon Restorer, March of the Multitudes, Nissa's Expedition, Overwhelm, and Trip. Uh, triple good spirits and venerated loxodon so mostly um the cards that really matter here sometimes you get ancient empiris or if you want to go make a really big creature it doesn't really come off that often if you have so enough creatures to make this you know most of the time you're just killing them anyways but sometimes it matters uh conclave tribunal is the number one most important card this uh card gives you access to um because this deck doesn't really have a lot of room for much removal like this, especially non-creature removal in, you know, Euro Catcher's Monument Thalia deck. You don't want to be playing a not, lot of non-creatures, but this lets you play a non-creature that still gives you access to this. Um, so really, really important for this deck. Um, you also get Knight Errant of Eos, sometimes March, never get Nissa's Expedition. You literally don't play any basics in this deck. Um, Overwhelm actually comes up a decent amount, or I wouldn't say a decent amount, but sometimes um, lets you kill faster to give all your things plus three plus three. Triplicate spirits sometimes as chump blockers and venerated locks it on if you just wanna make your guys bigger. Um, so really nice card. You can get it out for kind of free. It's kind of like a zero mana two, three that draws you a card. So very nice, doubles up triggers with Delmi. Um, you also play four Knight Aaron of Eos on its own. So, you know, there's a lot of games where you just keep chaining these together. You get more Amaras, you get more Knight Errants. Um, there's actually a funny interaction between Knight Errant and Oketra's Monument. Knight Errant gets you creatures uh, equal to the mana value of the number of creatures that it can vote. So you look at the top six and you get up to the two creatures. Um, so if you have Knight Errant out, this only costs four. And so you actually can't chain these together because you can't find more five drops, which is <laughs> a little bit of an awkward interaction. You actually would rather this not reduce the cost of Knight Errant, but you don't have a choice there. And that's not that big of a deal. Um, and at last, you play four Ornithopter. Um, this deck used to play four Clarion Spirit, which is when you cast your second spell, you make a 1-1. One, one. And that was where this was like really good. It had so many things that it was doing. Um, in this more disruptive, like Thalia-based version, it's not quite as busted, but like it's still really important. Convoking your Knight Errant, your Amara, all the things Amara gets, you know, playing off of Oketra's Monument, playing off of Rope Light Attendant. You really want a zero mana creature. It's really powerful. Um, it just does a lot. And then the last card in the deck, I think I already said the last card like three times, but is Warden of the Inner Sky. This is a huge boon to this deck when this card got printed. Um, it took me a little while to figure it out, but a lot of Convoke decks started playing it. And it, once I started, it's, it's insane. Um, so it's a one, two for one. And if you tap three untapped artifacts and our creatures, you get, it gets a plus one, plus one counter and you scry one. And then it has three or more counters, it has Flying and Vigilance. So this is a one mana creature that can just become like a 10, 10, 11. You know, it's just like an enormous 10, 11 Flying Vigilance and just completely dominate the game. Also, the scrying is really, really valuable to smooth out your draws because you don't really have any draw smoothing in this, this deck. Um, you're just kind of hoping that your draws come out nicely, but this is the card that really lets your, your draws become more smooth. Um, and... Yeah, this, this card has been really fantastic for this deck. I mean, you know, sometimes it's a little clunky if you don't have a lot else going on, but overall, it's been really great. Um, so, uh, I think that's all I have to say. You know, there's lands. I, you, I'm playing three mana confluence. You, you kind of want to have, make sure you have your black mana, green mana, white mana, so you have to play a little bit of a painful mana base. But um, I think it's worth it for the Juggernaut Peddler. I think there's an argument to be said, but like this deck struggles against blue-white control. And this card really helps um, just keeping them off of a wrath um, in case, like, you don't have your Esper Sentinels and Thalias. Anyways, um, that's the deck, and I will be back for round one. All right, ready for round one against Lyft. Um, I actually uh, played three rounds already and uh, won all three and realized I'd never hit the record button. So <laughs> I then dropped, played out the league. I actually went 7-0 in that league, so it would have been a nice one to record. But um, I'm going to keep this, by the way. Uh, yeah, can't prove it, unfortunately. 
Let's see. Um, I usually go with, oh, things are being a little laggy. Um, I usually like to lead with Pilgrim over um, Sentinel, although this is interesting. All right, so they're probably playing blue-white control or blue-white red, Jeskai control. Um, I think what I want to do is just run out the Thalia and the Esper Sentinel. Um, it puts pressure on them while also making it harder for them to Wrath. And if they do Wrath, we get to draw a card off the Esper Sentinel. So um, do I take two? I'm going to take two to uh, basically trading two damage for me to, for one damage for them. I think that's a good trade. So yeah, now, I mean, they can't Wrath this t next turn because they only have two mana and the cheapest Wrath they have is three. Um, and if they do Wrath, we get double triggers on the Sentinel. Wow, and they just scooped. Okay, so sometimes you can just kind of, that, that is the way you beat Blue Eye Control, is specifically with running out a bunch of Sentinels and um, Thalias. That's kind of the game plan, either that or taking their stuff with uh, Juggernaut, or taking their Wraths with Juggernaut Peddler. Um, you can beat basically like everything else. You're fine going through their counter magic. It's, it's, the, it's the Wraths <laughs> that are a problem as a creature deck. So, back for game two. Okay, game two against Bogfra. One second. Okay. Um, we are on the play. We don't have green mana for this Avacyn's Pilgrim. That would have made the hand really good. I think we still keep this. We have turn one Warden, turn two Peddler, then Monument if we draw land. That's still pretty good into Ornithopter. Um, if we don't draw land, we'll kind of have an awkward choice of whether or not we want to run the Ornithopter out before we play the Monument. But uh, let's see what happens. All right, playing against Soul Sisters. This can be kind of a weird matchup. Um, all right, let's play the Juggernaut Peddler. Let's see what's going on before we make a call about this Ornithopter. All right, they have two copies of Trillisara, which is not ideal. Luckily, this isn't the one that gets flying, so we have plenty of chump blockers for it, but them getting to scry a bunch is not great. It's considering that they have two of them, we're you know really just best off taking the Prosperous Innkeeper. All right, so now the question is, we can either play the Ornithopter um, and try to find our third land for Monument, but it means that if we were going to draw it anyways, then we get like an, uh, one fewer creatures. I think it's still worth it to um, do it this way. The other thing is that with a Soul Warden out, um, these triggers just add to their count for, or add to the counters for Trellisar. All right, we're going to bottom the Knight Errands. We're really just, we're on land or bust right now. Um, yeah, Warden has a tough time outracing the Soul Sisters because we're, especially, Soul Warden is the best card in the deck for them because we're adding so many counters. Oof. All right. Um, yeah, I think we are going to want to run out Knight Errant. Um, makes this a 4-4. Four, four. Not great, but... All right. We'll take the two we got. Um, yeah, not in great shape. Ooh, yeah, they have Voice of the Blessed. This is the one that's tough for us because it gets flying. Um, Imara helps, but we're, we definitely need to find a land, and they're killing us pretty fast. Oh, interesting. They just passed the turn. Um, that is not a good draw. <laughs> that is what I would call a bad draw. All right, let's play this. Um, so I'm going to tap, I'm actually going to tap this way. Because I, I actually want to keep the Ornithopter up to chump block. Um, no attacks. I'm not really sure how we get out of this at this point, honestly. Um, we're going to have to land the Monument next turn, and then 
unless we just before we even monument we have to in Mara try to, trying to hit a uh, no, you know, because we, we kind of need two removal spells now. Well, I guess we don't need two. We just need to kill this voice. So we could play Monument. Does this have flying yet? No, it doesn't. Um, they didn't attack. Wow, that is really good for us. Okay. Well, um, that kind of changes things. I kind of feel like that gives us potentially more time to... So what we can do is cast Monument. And we can't, um, we can play Rope Line into Imara. I think Monument into Delny plus Imara is pretty in, uh, intriguing. All right, we're gonna tap those three, give this flying. Um, another rope line. No, I think we really need to be looking for Skyclave Apparition here. Uh, these don't have flying, right? Okay. Well, then we might as well get in with this. Hit him for four, pass a turn. Yeah, so this one we care less about because we can chump block it forever, but this one gains flying and that's an issue. All right. Ooh, that's, that's going to be rough, too. Yeah, so we really need to kill this Voice of the Blessed because it also will turn off the Heliod. Yeah, this is going to get really enormous. I mean, this next turn with the Soul Warden and the <laughs> uh, Imara stuff, yeah, it's going to get completely ridiculous, the number of life they're going to, the amount of life they're going to gain and how big these two creatures are going to get. But this thing we get to chump, and we just need a hit or removal spell off the Amara for the Voice of the Blessed. One second. Oh, I had to pause for a second, and uh, they did some stuff. All right, so we're chumping here. Uh, yeah, they, I mean, they get a million life because it has lifelink. They, they gave their Voice of the Blessed lifelink. Um, yeah, so we're, we're going to get two cracks at finding a... Ooh, actually, that's really nice. Okay, so play this Delmi. Now we're going to get a bunch of cracks at this. Um, all right, I'm glad that they're putting the Heliod counters on the voice because that's what we're trying to kill anyways. Okay. Green, white. <laughs> it does also let us some of our creatures attack, which is nice. Um, we're still going to have a tough time, but this is going to draw us... If, if we can, like, hit two Conclave Tribunals... Um, then we're in we're in business because we'll be able to kill the voice in the Heliod and just kind of let this. Ah, we did not. Okay. Um, I think we probably have to take triplicate spirits as three chump blockers. All right. Cool. So we got to take the tribunal as as tempting as this ancient Imperiosaur actually kind of is, but we'll take the tribunal. Um, So let's, do we want to Amara again? Let's start here. One, two, three, four. All right. That kills voice. Um, if we Amara tapping these two, we'll have two creatures plus Warden back. Um which isn't actually enough to cast anything, but it does give us a chump blocker. We could also wait to rope line into it. All right, let's 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 wait. Um, we're gonna attack with the warden. 
And I guess we should actually, no, we shouldn't. All right, we'll end the turn. Hold on one second. Okay, sorry, I had to pause again. Um, they, uh, all right, they got the scurry oak, they, they, which is their combo. So uh, we lose. Um, oh, well, but we will be back for the next round. All right, game three. Apologies for that last round. My wife walked in while I was recording. It got me all confused and <laughs> had to pause and then unpause. And yeah, it was a whole thing. And, uh, but we lost to the, um, uh, scurry, scurry, scurry oak combo with the Heliod. Um, I think that uh, Soul Sisters can be a tough matchup if you don't draw your Skyclave apparitions or Conclave tribunals, and if especially if they get Soul Warden. Um, all right, I think we keep this. We can go like Rope Line Attendant into Delmi into another Rope Line. Ooh, because Mono Green Devotion is gonna be a little tough because they can definitely race us. This hand's a little slow for that. Or elves, actually. Ooh, but they don't have a one drop. Interesting. I don't love hands where we don't have a turn one play on the draw, but. All right, Werewolf Pack Leader. Yeah, this, they sometimes play this in Mono Green Devotion. Could be that. Could be sort of a brew or a not great deck. I mean, this is generally the type of thing that we're pretty good against. Mono Green Devotion is um, tough just because they go over the top of us. We go over the top of a lot of decks, but they go even more over the top. <laughs> All right. Ooh, no plays is definitely nice. Uh, let's play Temple Garden untapped. Delmi. Make two 1-1s. One Do you want to attack? I kind of want to block. They can't activate this. I kind of want to just be able to block them. Aquarian Beast Caller. All right, it might just be like a mono green beatdown deck. All right, let's see. So I think we just go Skyclave, I mean, rope line into rope line. Let's, no, let's not attack. Yeah, actually, you know what? Let's attack with the 2 2 and see what happens. I'd, hopefully, they would trade, but. Um, doesn't seem super likely. Let's see what happens. Ooh, they did trade. All right. Yeah, the good thing about rope line because it's a digital only card, people don't really know how it works. Um, and like, because once it's in play, it's just a two-two, especially a deck like this that can't blink it. Um, so people assume it's more valuable than it actually is. Oops, I think I did. I do that wrong. No, I didn't. Okay. Oh, I might have done the wrong. I think I was supposed to cast this one first. What is this? Exile card from your graveyard. Spells you cast cost one less for each card type they share with the cards exiled from. Ooh, wow, that's a pretty powerful effect. Jesus. Um, I've never seen this card before. I didn't play a lot during this set. All right. Ooh, Knight Aaron is an excellent draw. I think fairly obviously. <sighs> Let's see. So this, I think we're probably gonna wanna kill this with Skyclave. Um, we can attack for 10, 12, 14 here. What if we attack for nine and then Skyclave and Knight Errant? Yeah, that seems pretty good. Two, keep five back. All right, Knight Errant, tapping all five. Nice, all right, let's see what we get. Uh, another Skyclave and an Amara seems good. All right, Skyclave, we get to kill both things. I forgot about <laughs> double triggers. And this is a case where we really don't care about them getting a bunch of tokens back. Um, play the Esper Sentinel. Uh, I actually think I'm probably going to, yeah, I'm going to play the Amara too. Might as well. 
yeah, we're we're <laughs> I think we're in good shape here. Uh, sure, Venerated locks it on and another Knight Errant. Um, sure. <laughs> well, at least this is a pretty fun turn. <laughs> Not really for my opponent, but <laughs> if they have a Wrath, so I don't, the mono green deck, this will look. Stupid, but uh, it seems not super likely. Um, all right, I'm going to pass the turn here. <laughs> we made a lot of tokens. <laughs> I played Cemetery Prowler. Cool. Nice 3-4, bro. All right, we attack for one, 1 billion damage. They can't even block. I guess they can block the Venerate Locks on. But that'll do it, folks. Yep, that block resolves. <laughs> so I wonder why people don't scoop earlier. Why even waste the time playing that out? Um, cool, all right, be back for the next round. All right, two and one against Coptic. Yeah, I think I can keep this hand. It's a little awkward the sequencing so because like if we go turn one we can't go temple guard we can't play amara even if we play both ornithopters and then turn two we can play thalia but we don't have green mana for amara i think it's still fine um thalia is really good against a lot of decks. oh I, I should have paid attention to the fact that they are probably blue red pro prowess but um i definitely keep this hand against blue red prowess this is a very good hand against blue red Thalia is great against them. Um, Skyclave is really important against them. And then um, Warden can do some good work if you can get it big quickly. Would really love to draw a rope line. That would be, would really make this, dr this uh, draw explosive. They may just spend their turn killing the Thalia this turn. All right, they play a Dreadhorde Arcanist. Delmi, interesting. Well... Let's, without a, uh, without a third land, I'm not going to try to like wait to get two triggers out of this. I'm just going to go ahead and play it. All right. What do we want? How likely are we to like, just be able to Imperosaur them? So next turn we will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If they don't kill anything, if they do, I'm going to go for it. I guess, you know what? Um, should we? Yeah, I'm not worried about like dying this turn, so I'm, I'm fine to do this. Uh, yeah, I actually think that Temple Garden is a pretty good draw. We need our third land for these, and also if they kill something, we'll still be able to Ancient Imperius or... I mean, this is not a card that they really can deal with particularly easily. All they can do is race it. Shove aside. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're going to kill two things. So now we can't Imperius or, but we can still Skyclave. They're killing the Amara? Once again, people just don't know. <laughs> they don't really pay attention to how these cards work. This doesn't do anything anymore. It's just a 2-3. This is a card that does dumb things still. All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, we don't have enough for Imperius or. Um, all right, we're going to play the Skyclave. You know, it's actually kind of close what we kill. I mean, Symmetry Mage is kind of how their Dreadhorde Arcanist can do the thing now but being able to double spell is just so good for them um rope line yeah i think that's good um yeah i guess let's get in i mean maybe i shouldn't have tapped out here i don't know maybe that was a little greedy maybe i should have kept up the ornithopters as chump blockers Well, this, uh, 
yeah, I'm not super worried about this. They'd have to like, well, I guess if they go like land, yeah, there's land, land like another symmetry mage and a reckless charge. No, they don't have that. Okay, are they gonna kill the Skyclave? Sure. They get a two two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not enough. I don't think I want to down me first. I think I want to ro rope line first. Hmm. Yeah, I think now I'm fine tapping out of these because now this is going to gain vigilance. Uh, don't want the second down me. Can tack for four. And now we have a big flying blocker. Because now that has three counters, it has flying and vigilance. Okay, they play a Dreadhorde Arcanist. Do they have a Reckless Charge? Oof, they do. Hmm. Okay. Do they also have a Burn Spell? That would not be good. I actually think we're just dead if they do. They have another Reckless Charge. Jesus, okay. Are we just dead? I think we are, right? Seven, yeah, I think we're just dead. Yep, because there's a Trample. Damn, okay. Close. But, uh, yeah. The double Reckless Charge with the Dread Aura Arcanist, I mean, that was just kind of nasty, and they kept us off this Imperious Aura for long enough. Maybe that was a greedy take? I don't know. Um, I think the hand just ended up being a little slow. Maybe is it possible I should have killed the Symmetry Mage? Could that have been the difference? Not sure. Um, yeah, unclear. But, yeah, that, that, that was tough. That, that was a really good draw on their part. So, uh, two and two. Back for round five. All right. Round five against Beto Beto. Yeah, that sounds fine. It's not amazing. We haven't, have we even drawn Okecha's Monument? I guess we drew it in like the second, yeah, against uh, Soul Sisters, but not a lot of the namesake card. Um, I am still really loving uh, Imara. I think it's a really great addition to the deck, but um, it is taking the place of Sky Play Clave Apparition. Maybe I want the third one and only two Imara. I don't know. Sentinel. Okay, they have played a Steam Vents. They could. This could be another Blue Red Prowess. Man, we have been seeing so much of that. Man, a lot of this deck. Okay. Um, this is a pretty good hand against them though no attacks skyclave again very important um, nice to have an esper sentinel next turn i might go rope line into warden of the sky all right they're gonna kill both of our creatures here i might just skyclave though eh. Close. So rope line makes two creatures, and then this makes three. So we'll have five creatures. Um, we can tap. Uh, so this is still in in burn range, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Um, they're considering during <laughs> their attack phase. I don't really know why. I've never seen the blue-red deck ever put a card into their graveyard from Consider. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so Ornithopter. Yeah, I think Ornithopter makes me want to do the Rope Line Warden in the Sky play. Because it allows this to get to four power um, out of Burn Spell range. Although I guess 
double burn spell, still in double burn spell range, which they can potentially do with Dreadhorde Arcanist if they if they draw another um, Strangle or Shove Aside. Um, I guess alternatively we could just not and just keep a bunch of blockers back. Tell me. Um, nah, tell me it's a little bit too late here. So we could keep this. So we still have the ability to trade for the dread horde. Yeah, I mean, because any, well, if they have like Wizard's Lightning, unless they have a way to pump this, they can't double burn spell. So let's, I don't know, let's go for it. Um, Temple Garden allows us to double spell next turn. I think I'm fine with that. It does cost two life. Um, the one thing about this deck is that the Black Splash for um, Juggernaut Peddler really does help a lot of matchups. Like it really these a lot of the unfair matchups and the control matchups it makes a huge difference against but in this matchup the more painful mana base is a problem um like you start a lot of games at like 15. i think we oh, we played a tap no we didn't so we played untapped temple garden we'll play another one we've tapped mana confluence we'll have tapped it twice so that's six damage off our lands at least um and that's a lot against a deck that plays a lot of burn spells and tries to kill you really quickly. So um, here they have to have like reckless charge plus a burn spell. Oh, they have the fucking reckless charge always. All right, what are they flashing back? Is this expressive iteration? Consider, okay. Um. I think we're fine taking the damage here. We could trade, but this is going to do a lot of work for us. So I think we're fine. Well, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm fine. No blocks. Go to 12. It may mean that we don't play two things next turn. Let's first see what happens here. They didn't. All right, get rid of the Skyclave, get two one ones. Worth going to nine. Yeah, I think it is. Okay, one, two, three. One, oops, one, two, three. Ooh, nice, all right, they just scooped, cool. Yeah, I think I'm happy with how I played that. Um, this felt like it was going to be a problem that they really weren't going to be able to solve. Um, and uh, I think that that was worth keeping this around, especially considering we were going to kill the Arcanist next turn, where it would look really bad if they is if they had played another threat that turn. But because they didn't, um, it worked out really well. So three and two, be back for the next round. All right. Up against Solo Andrea, Andrea, Andrea. Hmm. Sands okay. It doesn't have greed mana, and we have a rope line attendance, but it does have Warden into Thalia into Delmi. Eh, let's keep. I mean, this deck doesn't really like to mulligan. Um, it's trying to like make a accumulate a critical mass of stuff wow is this another my god this deck is everywhere that's just crazy it's uh, this has become i i think <laughs> for my next video i think i'm gonna have to play something that really beats this deck um it's not that hard to beat this deck like i mean it's not like it's so resilient you just play a bunch of burn spells um or it's, it's a, a bunch of creature removal. Like you play like, you know, four Fatal Push and four whatever, Shieldred's Edict, and they can never win. Um, okay. Am I attacking? Let's play Delmi. Uh, 
Is there any chance I'm scrying with this? I don't really want to block. So I think the answer is yes. We have a, we're going to take some damage. <sighs> oh, Catcher's Monument. Man. Interesting. Yeah, I guess I'll keep this. I don't know. That's close. All right. They have the shove aside for the Thalia. Yeah, part of what I was thinking is that they were probably going to kill Thalia this turn. So we'd be able to cast it for three and then Warden. Um, oh, they're, do they're getting a lot of damage in though this turn. This is eight. Yeah, it's not great. Okay. And we pay two life here. Ugh, I don't like that. Um, Ornithopter. Uh, I mean, it can block. Can we do... <laughs> Is this actually fine? Now nah, we, we can draw so many more things, even the Greenland. All right, no attacks. We're probably chumping this turn. There's a lot of stuff that beats us here, though. Let's see. Ooh, they, it looks like, oh shit. Yeah, this is Flame of Anor. All right, that's uh, bad. <laughs> Okay. Well, that'll just about do that. Yeah, they killed our monument. They killed our warden. And yeah, we are fucked. All right. Well, um, three and three, not the best performance, but uh, deck was fun. Um, and I do really like it. With this amount of blue red prowess, it might not be the best positioned right now. Um, I've been winning a decent amount, but yeah, it's the blue red prowess matchup is like. A, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I'm uh, in my tracking. I'm about 50-50 against it, maybe a little bit better. But um, yeah, it it can be it can be tricky, and especially with the more painful mana base it is. The green white version I think has been a lot better against it, but green white's worse against um, the uh, control decks and the combo decks without the juggernaut peddler. So. Um, yeah, this was uh, sweet. I will be back in a second with some deep dives into the, uh, the card choices. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so let's dive a little bit deeper um, into the Ocatra's Monument archetype. So I've been playing this for um, about a year. Like I said earlier, this is the first deck I built in this format, and um, it's gone through a million different iterations. Um, there's still different, multiple different versions I, I play sometimes, and I'm still not entirely sure which one is the correct one. It also has changed based on the metagame over the years, um, what like is better positioned, what kind of combinations of cards, and obviously whether the deck itself is better positioned or not. You know, this deck is not ideal against some of the combo decks, although this current version is much better suited for that kind of stuff. Um, so the first thing to talk about is the color combinations. Um, Obviously, we have to be white if we're playing Ogetra's Monument. Um, I mean, you could theoretically just only use the, the second ability, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Plus, just in general, this kind of strategy pairs well with, with white cards. <laughs> um, and uh, so I have played mono white, green white, black white, and black white green, which is the version here. Um, all of them, I think, are viable. Uh, mono white, you have much better mana. You get access to... Um, more utility lands like Shefet Dune is a nice one. It's the desert that you can anthem your creatures um, for four mana and uh, sacking a desert. And uh, so that, that's really nice, but you lose some power. The green-white version loses a Juggernaut Peddler, which is really important against certain decks, but much better mana, much less painful mana base. And the black-white version loses the kind of explosive token stuff that you get from Rope Line, the ramp from Pilgrim, and the flexibility from Imara. But uh, you can play kind of a death and taxes strategy that works pretty well as well. Um, I think there's also potential for like blue-white and, uh, or you know, maybe blue-white-green, uh, Bant, or red-white, you know, uh, Imidane's Recruiter. 
the card that kind of anthem your team is a card I've always wanted to play in this. I, I think I actually tried it once. Couldn't be nice with Rope Line for like a Naya deck. There's Blue White for like Soul Queller and stuff, maybe Meddling Mage. So there's a lot of ways to build it. Um, let me talk a little bit more about uh, the cards that I've played over the years. Um, a big one that I want to start with is Ranger Captain of Eos because this is um, has a few different uh, side cards to re reference as well. Um, so Ranger Captain uh, both allows you to, you know, create card advantage, and it also lets you give gives you access to kind of a toolbox of one drop creatures and have you know more access to effects that you usually wouldn't. Um, it's ended up being cut from the deck mostly because uh, just to make space for Amara and Delny. But I did like Ranger Captain. It's also that second ability can be really good against combo decks. You know, like a Mizzix Mastery deck is a deck that can be really tough for us to beat without certain cards. And if they like cast their Mizzix Mastery, you can sack this in response to just make it so they can't go off that turn. They have to kill this before they try to go off. Um, you also can play this against uh, control decks where if you have enough of a board, you can play the Ranger Captain and sack it on their upkeep so they can't wrath you and then you kill them the next turn. And then off of Ranger Captain, there's a variety of one drops that I've played. Um, I always played Selfless Cathar, which seems like a terrible card. <laughs> um, it's a one mana one one that you can pay two to anthem your team, pay two and sack it to anthem your team. Uh, it's actually really useful. In this deck, there's a lot of times where you're just like, I just want a way to kill them faster this turn. And if I double, you know, if I make all my one ones into two twos, they're dead this turn. Um, Concealing Curtains is another big one for black-white versions. This was kind of the core of the black-white taxes deck. Um, you uh, pay three, and then you basically get to duress them. So you, you're kind of more all in on the mana disruption, or the card, ha sorry, the hand disruption with Concealing Curtains and Juggernaut Peddler. And it's a really nice curve to go Ranger into Concealing Curtains. And against a control deck, sometimes you can go Ranger, sack it on upkeep um, on their turn, to keep them from wrathing, and then concealing curtains take away their wrath. So that that's a pretty cool thing to do. Or and similarly against a control deck. Uh, this was particularly good when we used to be able to play um, Orcish Bowmasters, which was a really important card for the black white version of this deck before it got nerfed in Magic um, or in Magic Arena. It used now oh, Orcish Bowmasters. Let me pull it up. Um, it it doesn't trigger when it comes into play. It used to be great because this was two bodies for Convoke and for, you know, you know all that stuff and, but, uh, and also was great disruption. But it doesn't actually give you two bodies right away. It's only when they draw cards. So this is a much, 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 much worse card. Some people still play it occasionally. But the fact that that uh, got nerfed also allowed us to start playing Thalia, which had, had to come out of the deck because it was so bad against Bowmasters. And Thalia is, I think, one of the most important disruptive pieces for the deck. Um, some other stuff that I've played, uh, how do I make this? There we go. Uh, Voice of Resurgence is okay. It's like decent against control decks. The exile base wraths make it a lot worse, but it does make their counterspell stuff really awkward. Um, and it doubles up triggers with Delny. Uh, Lotho is a card I've tried a little bit to, you know, be kind of a mana, dis mana generation engine, um, which is something this deck doesn't really have. Regal Bunnycorn, the, I, Bunnycorn, I, I built a more aggressive version of this deck. I mean, Regal Bunnycorn is just like an 8-8 for two almost all the time in this deck, but it doesn't have any evasion, and that's like worse than it seems, The uh, <laughs> just an 8-8 for two, because it, it doesn't really help you go off. It's just big when you've already gone off, and they can just chump it. So, you know, it has its merits, but I ultimately found it, probably not be good enough. Uh, Containment Priest. This is uh, in certain metagames where there's a lot of decks that this stops. It's a reasonable option. Charming Prince. Uh, you can. It, it's a flexible card that helps you smooth out your draws, which is really nice, and also obviously gaining life, and then blinking your uh, coming to play effects like Juggernaut Peddler, Rope Line, Skyclave, Apparition. Judge is familiar. This was a four of when I first started this deck, and I um, I think it was a four of in the original modern deck, or at least it's been in other decks that I've played like this. Uh, just a disruptive one mana, one, one flyer. It's a nice card. Um, it ended up basically making 
getting cut for like Pilgrim and Warden of the Inner Sky really kind of controls the one drop slots now. Thraben Inspector similarly used to be in the deck. I think I've trimmed it. I think I actually had one left and I trimmed it for Amara. It's really nice with Warden because it creates two permanents. And it's just generally a good card. Uh, Jasper Sentinel, Sentinel is a card that's um, okay, but doesn't let you uh, Oketra's Monument on turn two. Like you usually have something to tap, but you don't have something to tap on turn two unless you have an Ornithopter in hand. So this makes this card a good amount worse. Um, Gilded Goose, I really don't like in this deck. Not being able to tap it multiple times makes the fact that it can make black mana or green mana just, it's not worth it. Um, Delighted Halfling, we do have a decent amount of legends in Thalia, Delny, and Amara, but those aren't really that hard to cast. And especially with these two non-legendary cards with high mana requirements, it really wasn't pulling its weight. Um, another really big card that was an absolute no question for of at the beginning of uh, when I was building this archetype is Clarion Spirit. And still, if I play the black-white version, this is my replacement for Rope Lion. It does a reasonable impression of Rope Lion Attendant. Um, really great card, make, gets cheaper monuments, and you just like can consistently trigger this. Uh, it's great with Ornithopter. You can just trigger it on turn two. Powerful card. I, I have a real soft spot for it, but at this point, I think Rope Line is just better. Uh, Haywire Might, another card that's a mostly I was playing as a Ranger Captain target, but gives you access to artifact removal. It's obviously mostly meant for the one ring in this deck or in this format. It also, there's enchantress decks that float around, but there, there kind of aren't enough artifacts and enchantments to make this a great main deck card. Shire Sheriff, this card I kind of love because it feels so perfect in this deck. Uh, you just get to sack a token and then you, it's a Banisher Priest. So it's basically a two mana Banisher Priest. And with Oketra Mon Oketra's Monument, it's a one mana Banisher Priest because it makes its own token. It only costs one mana. You exile the token you just made and then you get to kill something. The problem was that this effect I just found was too inconsistent. Um, even though we have a decent number of tokens, it still felt like we kind of wanted to be playing like Thraben Inspector, Gilded Goose to make it more reliable. And the other thing is that like against um, a deck like Blue Red Control or Blue Red Prowess, which is where this is at its best, they just kill it. So there's some decks like Elves and Goblins and stuff where this is really good, but a lot of decks where it just dies immediately and they just get their thing back. Unlike Skyclave, where if they if this dies, they just get a token. Imara is a card I've been trying out. Um, pretty nice. There's so many different ways to tap this uh, between Knight Errant, Im this Imara, uh, and Warden, um, or just attacking that uh, makes it so you can go off pretty well. Beseju, a card that I was playing in the green white version, couldn't afford it. Uh, don't play this card. You can't afford a, a mono green land in this deck. And it's not that good in this format either. Um, I think I covered all of them. Like I said, there's a million different versions of this deck. There's more aggressive versions. This is a more mana denial, like disruptive version. You could play a version that's like more all in on making tokens, like, you know, a green white that cuts all four Juggernaut Peddler for, you know, Amara and Clarion Spirit. Just like cares less about disruption, disruption and just way more about making a lot of tokens. There's a, there's a million ways to build this. Um, I tried to build it as a um, Soul Sisters deck, which I think is potentially possible. I tried it with uh, uh, humans, and I think that has some merit as well. So, like I said, a million, million different options. Uh, for anyone who tries it out, let me know in the comments, um, A, how you, what you think about it, and B, if you found that there's certain cards that really overperform, um, and or if you found your own kind of spin on things that works really well. But uh, yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna where I'm gonna leave it. And I appreciate everyone watching. Let me know. Uh, let me know what you think. And I will be back. Uh,